historical price of electricity, and your retirement plan. Let's jump right, jump right into this because this is such a pet peeve of mine. I don't get I get it. People are just living in fear, but either way, uh, I don't think people read enough or they know their history enough to recognize how good they have it now. So they say idiotic things like this, shubity boop, and this is him, me, and the serious, because he's serious. The government is destroying the value of the dollar. Josh, he's mocking me. You're forgetting all the shiny toys we have now. And this is Shubity Boop, me. Oh yeah, I forgot. All things wonderful are made possible by nuking the dollar because science. Yeah, that's just dumb. But then I say, I like when you said shiny new toys. And I said, yeah, things like electricity. All right, so let's just dive into this. This is mind boggling and it's idiocy, 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 idiocy. And again, not saying this dude is an idiot. I'm just saying this is an idiotic statement to make. Shiny new toy. So we're going to look at the Bureau of Labor Statistics, the uh, Handbook of Labor Prices. Handbook of Labor Prices. The old CPI was based on, basically, the old, and this is where people just don't understand things. It's, it's just too bad. People have no interest in understanding stuff. They don't want to read, frankly. They don't. Uh, they just do what they're told. You know, but whether or not it's a red versus blue, it doesn't matter. They're going to read shadow stats or watch shadow stats, and shadow stats will tell them what the real inflation rate is. And you're like, really? Is that really a f is that happening to you right now? Uh, no. All right. Anyways, the point being is if we actually look at the BLS and the CPI numbers from the past, Consumer Price Index, it was based on a couple of things, negotiating numbers for unions and stuff like that. That's what a base was based on. So we have Bureau of Labor Statistics, all right? The Handbook of Labor, what was it called? The Handbook of Labor Stats. And you see about working people who worked on a train, uh, government workers in Washington, D.C., all these various things. It's, it's incredibly interesting. But it changed remar remarkably in 1981. That's where the, if we look at inflation like they used to be, it's stupid. Um, anyway, but I'm going to just share with, so we got BLS, Bureau of Labor Statistics, uh, Handbook 1931. Uh, printed off 1924 to 26, you know, and they're like, these are many pages, 1929, and uh, this is 1936, and we're going to go into this uh, page 662 from the uh, Bureau of Labor Statistics, Handbook of Labor Statistics, 1936. And we're going to look at page 662, what you can see here, Retail Prices of Electricity, Net Price Per Kilowatt Hour of Electricity, for household use in 51 cities. Again, the whole point of this was to get a gauge of how much wages should be adjusted based on prices out there. And if you know what happened with FDR when he first came in office in 1933, he reduced wages because of the Great Depression by 15% across the board. All right, now we're trying, the unions are trying to say, we need wages increasing. And he's like, well, how, what do we base that on? Well, CPI, well, what is CPI? It's, it's, it's incredibly interesting history of this. Um, all right, anyway, be it as it may. In 1934 in Atlanta, you paid six and a half cents per kilowatt hour. Six and a half cents in 1934 dollars. 1934, you pay six and a half cents per kilowatt hour for your first 25 kilowatt hours. The next 35 kilowatt hours, you pay five cents a kilowatt hour. The next 140 kilowatt hours, you pay three cents a kilowatt hour. All right. Remember, six and a half cents in 1934 per kilowatt hour, the first 25. Now we can look at uh, Baltimore. In Baltimore, your first 50 kilowatt hours, you paid five cents a kilowatt hour. And then the next 175, you paid 3.4 cents. Boston, it was seven cents a kilowatt hour in Boston. Uh, Dallas was six cents a kilowatt hour. That's a 1934 number. All right, so now I take my trusty bill here from uh, Sony Electric. I don't know, EMC, I'm not sure what that stands for. Electric, uh, I'm not sure. Anyway, and this is from Dateline, August 31st, 2022. The billing date was uh, the middle of July to the middle of August and a very hot, deep southern uh, winter, uh, summer, I should say, with lots of air conditioning on. What was my average cost per kilowatt hour? Well, my first 500 kilowatt hours was uh, 7.67 per kilowatt hour. My next 500 kilowatt hours was 7.3 cents per kilowatt hour. My next 2,268 kilowatt hours was 8.6 cents per kilowatt hour. I consumed an average 
of 121 kilowatt hours per day, per day. If you look at the consumption of kilowatt hours, they're looking at a month. They're saying if you consume over the course of your uh, monthly bill over 140 kilowatt hours, they're looking at kilowatt hours consumption in the 25 kilowatt hours as the average family in the month. I do that in freaking half a day. All right, so then I want to show you this. It's interesting. Cost of electricity in the Roaring Twenties. He's going to use Wichita as an example. Another example he uses Minnesota, Minneapolis. I'm sure he uses other ones too. And this is from the uh, the high, the Public Utilities Fort Nightly. It's a sustainable, resilient, affordable debates. Right. Lighting a lamp in Wichita was a pricey proposition. A small interconnection with the grid allowed you to take up to 400 watts at a time. 400 watts. <laughs> It's not enough to run your fridge. You can run your current current fridge even with Energy Star. You couldn't run that on 400 watts at a time. <laughs> I mean, come on, that's your whole house. You paid your utility a dollar if you used 10 kilowatt hours over the course of the month. That's a dime per kilowatt hour in the 1920s, in 1923 to be precise. Now, that's a little bit less than what you pay today for a kilowatt hour in Wichita, which is about 12 cents. Though a dime in 1923 was worth $1.39 as today. So you paid a dime for a kilowatt hour, and you got all of 10 kilowatt hours over the course of a month. You're paying, that's a dime per kilowatt hour. You're paying 12 cents a kilowatt hour in Wichita, and night. this is written in 2017, if memory serves. A dime, that would be the equivalent of a buck 39 a kilowatt hour today. All right. Here's another way to look at it. Electricity in Cowtown costs less than one eleventh now compared to the Roaring Twenties. But inflation, shadow stats. The rate structure was decidedly declining. Was was decidedly declining back in those days. You paid a buck twenty eight if you used twenty kilowatt hours over the course of a month. Two oh eight if you used forty kilowatt hours over the course of a month. So the cost was just twenty eight percent more to use twice as much electricity. Uh, let's see, uh, F, let's see that, uh, that, and for a 10 room house, a McMansion in those days, your interconnection was a whopping 1.6 kilowatts. <laughs> I mean, you can run your fridge with a compressor kicking in and that's pretty much it. Uh, <laughs> you're not running a stove. Uh, your rates were a buck 75 for 20 kilowatt hours, 243 for 40. 323 for 60 and basically 500 for 100. Uh, 100 kilowatt hours in a month was considered a huge level of consumption, and I'm using 121 a day. That means the wealthy of Wichita might pay less than a buff uh, less than a buffalo nickel for a kilowatt hour, while the less hill the while the less well heeled paid a dime. Still, a buffalo nickel was effectively 70 cents today electricity is pricey back then for everyone rich or poor I, I mean do you not know the level of what we hold on a sec do you not know the level of machinery that we use to simplify our lives can you simply sit there and say oh my goodness where the dollar is getting nuked that's freaking idiotic we have refrigerators we have wash machines we have dishwashers we have air conditioned units have you never looked at a book of history and showed what women had to go through to wash your clothes, for heaven's sake? How about hot water for a shower? I just, the, the insanity of saying the dollar is nuked relative to what it was in the 1920s is freaking idiotic. I'm sorry. Relative to the shiny new toys we have today, like dishwashers, wash machines, ranges for the oven, microwaves, for heaven's sake. Now, you might make an argument, it was silly to make it. That life was easier back then. Remember how simple life used to be. My mom used to have that when we lived in Maine. There was a little picture of a little girl on a farm. Remember how simple life used to be. Life wasn't simple back then, man. You crazy? Life was hard. Only freaking uh, Pollyannas would say, oh, it's so much better back then because, you know, I go outside and wash my clothes by hand at the, and bring up, never mind, pumping mechanisms and to move water from the creek out there up here. Have you never read a book? What these people had to do for water in the old days? That is crazy to me, man. 
Now you turn on the freaking light bulb and here you go. And this right here is the LED light. It's all of uh, 15 watts. And that's an LED light. You know how much an incandescent light would be? That right there, 60 watts. 60 watts. If you ran that for uh, 60, I'm going to get my calculator. If you ran a 60 watt incandescent light for one day, that's 24 hours. 60 watts times 24. You would get, that would be the equivalent of 1.4 kilowatt hours in one day. And back in the old days, you're talking, you had 10. The average Joe in the United States had 25 kilowatt hours a month, a month. And just running this light as an incandescent would be 1.4 kilowatt hours. You're going to tell me that life is so much better or worse now because a dollar has been nuked. You're comparing apples to oranges, man. And on top of that, you don't know what the CPI was. People just don't know. They're ignorant about how the CPI used to be calculated and what it used to be calculated for. Basically, if you're using the CPI up until about the mid-60s, the George Stigler, yeah, he kind of created this new mechanism to use CPI. It's really in the 80s when it took off. If you're using the old CPI, you don't know what you're doing, man. You're not. And it will get into that in a different uh, video I do here today. But I just, I wish people could see this. Not to be grateful for what you have today and to say, oh, we're getting, it's just, it's, 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 you're, you're, you got it too good, man. That's the only way I can say it. You have it so good that you're like, it was better in the past because the dollar bought more. The dollar bought it. Oh, and then I want to show you this too real quick because I found this kind of funny. All right, so this right here is from, uh, I love this website, in 2013 dollars. And he's saying, look, we have, according to the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics, prices for electricity are 441% higher in 2022 versus 1913. And uh, right now, the average kilowatt hour right here is 17 cents. So you're thinking, wow, that must mean the average price per kilowatt hour was what? Because I just showed you what it was in 1926. So we can go back to, well, actually, what did I say? 1930, I think it was 1931. Uh, and we can see it hasn't gone up. Far. It's actually gone down significantly. But they're, they're going to say it's that uh, from 1931 to 2022, uh, the average price is 574% higher. It's simply not true. And I'm going to show you why, how they get it wrong here. 17 cents a kilowatt hour in 1931, all right, uh, or current right now average. Back then, it was still 10 cents a kilowatt hour in Atlanta. So, the, and inherently, that shows you has it gone up 574%. It just hasn't. Anyway, how they get in this? It's um, it's it's actually very dis. I don't say disingenuous. It's not the right word I'm looking for. They're gonna say, look, buying power of a hundred dollars in 1931. So, if you spent a hundred dollars on electricity, you would spend. Uh, what do you say? 674 today on a, I just, it's not, <laughs> if you spent a hundred dollars on electricity back then, ah, it's, it's mind bogglingly silly. And this is where they're getting below the calculations, equivalent buying power for electricity over time. Uh, for $100 beginning in 1931, each of the amounts below is equivalent in terms, again, a hundred dollars of electricity in 1931 when we're talking about what you actually could power in your house. You see how they're missing this? They're, they sh what they should be doing is looking at simple is what is the cost per kilowatt hour? They're looking at 17 cents a kilowatt hour. And then they should say, what did people actually, what was their consumption of electricity? This is where the CPI gets a little bit jacked up. What's your consumption of electricity? If your consumption of electricity was four, I mean, what do you say, 25 kilowatt hours, and now my consumption of electricity is 2,000 kilowatt hours. And the price of electricity was 10 cents per kilowatt hour. And now it's 17 cents, which mine isn't. Mine is only 8 cents. And inherently, I do not have a 574% increase in the cost of electricity. It's just, it's, it's, you're not comparing apples to apples. And this is where the mistakes rookies make. Yes, rookies who don't think between the lines. They just say, oh, oh, I get it now. The price of a car. In 1913, it was only 500 bucks. The price of a car now is $50,000. Oh, and this is where the electric vehicle people are foolish too. Oh, because I, I said electric vehicles are never going to take off like they say, unless they're forced to, which is what's happening. But still, oh, you must think the horse and buggies. Well, the horse and buggies versus an, an, an uh, internal combustion engine, completely different technology. All right, so a horse and buggy could take me to a downtown Atlanta in a, a day or two. You know what I'm saying? Uh, ICE can take me to downtown Atlanta in an hour, an hour back, and that's with, with traffic. 
I, so the idea of equating electric vehicles to ICEs as ICEs to the horse and buggy is mind bogglingly stupid. Electric vehicles are actually a devol 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 devolving technology relative to what an ICE can do. It's, I mean, if you want a quiet car that can go faster, uh, zero to 60, that's great. I want to get my point without having to freaking worry about running out of fuel to get down to where I need to go for long distance driving or even short distance driving, doesn't matter. And I certainly don't want to plug into the grid. And I have a $5,000 battery on lithium battery on lithium mining. That's all creepy. Point being is that is a devolving technology, ICE to EV, where it's an evolving technology, a difference in you know freaking minutes versus hours from horse and buggy to ICE. It's kind of like NASA. It's weird. The only his, the only technology other than electric vehicles that ever goes back is the NASA. Like we used to have the technology to go to the moon, but we've lost and destroyed that technology according to Bob Pettit or Don Pettit, and we can't do it again. So now we can't go back because our technology is declining relative to our ability to go to the moon. <laughs> we'll see. Love, dude.